Okay, I'm going to have to say a Swedish word today, which is apparently supposed to be pronounced knit. But I've been replaying a game I knew as Knit Underground for eight years now. And as I don't speak a word of Swedish, and the game developer has gone on record for... He isn't sensitive about the pronunciation. So I'm just going to say Knit. Nicholas Niflas Nygren, again, apologies for pronunciation, is a Swedish video game designer who got his big break following the release of several small freeware games Developing a personal house style and a small but sincere fan base who really adored what he was producing. In 2012, he would release his latest and greatest game onto a video game console to try and find a larger audience. What had begun for him initially as a hobby, just a guy learning by doing, developed into this sprawling, labyrinthine puzzle game that it completely defies explanation. How can I describe Knit Underground? I think it does a fairly good job at doing it before you even reach the title screen. From the second the game loads, the player has control of a shadowed avatar. And though you can jump straight up into the title screen, new players are probably just going to hold right and then they'll fall down into this pit. What follows is a short loop where you're sent back to the left, then right again jumping over some pits, then down, over to the left, climb upwards, all the way back over until you eventually find yourself above where you started. Once you've dropped back down, you head right, and then finally reach the title screen. Knit Underground. A game that fundamentally is about from getting from A to B, but where you'll usually have to hunt for a route as there is no direct or clear path to follow. The journey, not the destination, the journey is important. And this is what that gaming is all about. The importance of the journey is the importance of the gameplay, of the mechanics. This is a platform game. Niflas appears to be a purist. He gets gaming, and he values this kind of intricate design to ensure the player is constantly engaged. Others have waxed lyrical about the importance of World 1-1 and the original Super Mario Bros, which provides an invisible tutorial about how the game and Mario himself will work. Knit Underground takes this philosophy and then extrapolates on it in a brilliant way. I'm always wary of describing games behind an indie label, considering that the genre and the effective scope of the game should be judged on its own merits, rather than by the publisher behind it. But Knit Underground is the kind of game that challenges even that. It consistently turns its own way, sometimes to the detriment of the overall experience, but always in ways that justify its own strange sense of self-identity. Right from the start, it lies to you, describing itself as a free chapter game, Chapters 1 and 2 are just training levels. They're small, self-contained set pieces designed to help you acclimatise to the strange world of Knit Underground and the seemingly entirely disparate control mechanisms of me, walk, jump and climb, and Bob, bounce. Each chapter ends suddenly, entirely unsatisfactory some might say, but this is just an introduction to the most important theme of Knit Underground. Throughout the game, which is chapter 3, you will be asked to go on pointless fetch quests to carry out minor objectives and missions that the game flat out admits are just there to get in your way, to give you something to do. Out of quite a few of these, not so minor inconveniences, you return to the quest giver to find they have vanished. And even when they remain present, the paltry reward is hardly worth the effort. Right from the start, the game is making a point about the genre, towing a difficult line between parody whilst becoming one of the worst examples of what it's taken the mick of. It does, however, raise an interesting question. Do you do this for the tangible rewards, or for the sense of self-accomplishment, or just because you enjoy doing it? All the way back in 2012, five years before Hollow Knight would follow and tread a similar path and successfully break through that indie glass ceiling to reach mainstream appeal, the similarities and potential between Knit Underground and that masterpiece are uncanny. Both star a diminutive hero, exploring a vast underground labyrinth, caverns which require platforming expertise to be tested to the limit in order to proceed and navigate. This vast world of both are sparsely populated by other tiny microscopic creatures, in this case mainly sprites and fairies, but there are a few sentient bugs, who inhabit what remains of a ruined world, long after some ill-defined catastrophe. 
This is not to take anything away from Team Cherry, who introduced extremely tight combat mechanics, a Metroidvania upgrade system, boss fights against increasingly dangerous foes, and beautiful artistic graphics. There's a reason why it got as popular as it did. Hollow Knight had mainstream appeal and a level of polish that is unmistakable. But whilst Team Cherry are exactly that, a team, though we had collaborators, it's clear to see that Knit Underground is a game of a very singular vision from one very keen-eyed individual. Niflas was able to create a game that has pure charm, excellent puzzles, and lots and lots of content. There are over 1,800 rooms in total, probably less than a third of which are actual puzzles, but it puts you in the middle of one of the largest and most well-defined labyrinths in the history of platform gaming. And for anyone who loved the exploration element of Hollow Knight, I could recommend this as a progenitor of the genre any day. If you give yourself time to acclimatise past the basic and black geometries through which you must climb and bounce your way, this is a beautiful, immersive world that, despite showcasing some of the most basic programming video games today, can arguably be said to feel just as alive as some open AAA blockbusters. The writing is deceptively simple. It certainly didn't win any awards for its coarse and basic humour, but it draws the players in with as little pointless faff as possible. The limited cast do have some interesting depth to them if time is taken to explore, but Niflash shows little interest in foisting narrative onto players who aren't interested. What is here is more a parody than a serious attempt to tell an interesting narrative, but at its heart is the call to adventure. The world is in peril. You must head to the six bells of fate hidden around the map to save it. Only almost half of the game's cast don't really believe the world actually is ending and just think the player is exploring these caverns because it's fun to do so. And there will be a lot of exploring. The map is simply humongous and it takes hours to find every nook and cranny and secret. While some people will complain it's both sparse and all the same I can say that this is gaming in its purest, most simplified form. Navigation of a world map with occasional puzzle rooms that can test either mental skill, quick reflexes or both, using two entirely separate physics engines, platforming or bouncing. It's usually a pretty chill experience but there will be moments of thrill in there, and whilst the foreground is always dark and foreboding, the simple and beautiful background art and the music are both distant and splendid, full of little touches and flourishes designed to both amuse and inspire. Control-wise, things are a little sketchy, challenging but not impossible, particularly when trying to navigate the unpredictable bouncing ball around some very dangerous areas. I really don't know why I fell in love with this underground. It throws the challenges and quests at you purely because that provides more opportunities for gameplay. It does this blatantly and with no apology. Some quest givers just outright state they are doing it because they can and they make no apology for borrowing your way and sending you back with additional challenges before you can proceed. There is always another quest. In other genres, we would call this padding, but what Knit does though is spark an argument about what the difference is between padding and content. Surely it's all content. Surely if it isn't a game, it is designed to be played. Perhaps the world is ending. Perhaps it isn't. But if you want to play a video game about exploring a vast network of caverns with some excellent platforming challenges, then go ahead and do it. You will find some surprises on the way. And for a few dozen hours, I was completely entranced. <laughs>